Hello, this is Hart with Mythic MTG Talk number 357, doing a financial review for June 2017. Quick qu question that I need to answer is, have I stopped doing these? No. I did pause for a while. My channel was getting a little bit too heavy on the financial. I apologize for anybody who that didn't work out for. I am back to doing them monthly, and if I'm able to get enough content in, I'll be doing them every two weeks. A lot of stuff going on in Magic Finance, and some of it's been really rough. Let's get the rough stuff out of the way and then move on to the fun stuff. Number one on the rough side. Wow, lots of bands. We're living in the most prolific band period we have ever had in Magic's history. And we're comparing this even to like the Tempest Urza time period where there were crazy bad cards out there. I don't know what is going on here. You have a lot of interactions that when you get giant numbers of cards together, cards get more powerful. And some of these are just ones that probably should have been banned long ago, given the way that magic works. Sensei's Divining Top, if you're not going to play with chess clocks, which they never will do, you should do it. It's freaking awesome. Two minute magic, you can make it happen. But if you're never going to play with chess clocks, you can't have top. The card is just a nightmare to watch people grind through. Free draw spells, especially in blue. Cataxian Probe needed to go. I have no idea why it's still legal in Legacy. Break it in Legacy. It's crazy good in Legacy. It's crazy good in Legacy. Why is it not banned in Legacy? Either Marvel works. This is a little bit of a rougher one. I did not see this coming. Yes, it's format warping. Yes, they should have known that when they put the card out. You have giant things the size of Eldrazi in standard, and you're able to put them out for basically four mana. Yeah, you were going to run into some problems. The combo cat needed to go and probably never should have come out. But this has really shook up standard finance. People just don't trust standard finance at all. Stores are really leery, buy list prices. I wish I could just aggregate all of them, but they do seem to be down across the board for standard. The way that this banning was done was probably one of the worst bannings ever. The idea that you tell people it's legal and two days later you tell them that it's banned. Oh, there's better ways to do things. Right now, for standard investment-wise, I'm avoiding 90% of it, the exception being foils that are playable in either Eternal or in Commander. Just avoid standard for a few more months. Let Wizards show that they can put out a set or two without banning things before you start to buy back in. I'm sorry if people are going to be sad about that who really want me to help them sell standard cards. This video is just not going to do it. We could have a healthy standard buy and sell environment, but right now it's just super unstable. So in standard, cards that I would consider buying or holding on to are those that are eternally awesome. Torrential Hulk, it's great. Really, really awesome EDH card, really good control card. Metallic Mimic is probably going to be the one card in this whole video that other financial people are like, he's crazy. Why is he saying hold on to this standard card? It's colorless. It can go in any EDH deck. It can go in many different themed decks. This is an awesome card. Modern. Burn. Ooh, great right now. Boros Charm has been reprinted. Cards like Destructive Revelry are just way undervalued, and Burn is an awesome deck in Modern. I would definitely pick these up right now. Death Shadow, sell. Ooh, this card is still really broken. It is format warping. I don't give it another year before they have to toss it. Cryptic Command, really cheap right now. Awesome for control decks, awesome for casual decks, awesome for EDH. There's been a lot of printings of it, and now is the time to pick it up. Wonderful card. Supreme Verdict, super cheap. One of the best cards ever printed for a board wipe because it says can not be countered. So good, especially for EDH, solid and modern also. Now I've got an uncommon in here. I usually don't go into commons and uncommons, but this is a combo piece at a quarter. This is going to be a casual fun card or casual broken way to get rid of friends for a long time. Legacy? Ooh, the bannings have changed things a lot. Stifle is back. This is one of the top eight decks 
from GP Vegas. There's another one that was running to Stifles. Stifle is a really tough card to play, but it is a beautifully powerful card. Definitely look at picking up one of the Stifles that are out there, holding on to them and playing them in Legacy. This is such a good card right now. Obviously, Delver of Secrets is dominating. I'm not sure what Wizards is going to do about that overall. We could see some cards getting banned from this list, but I'm not sure which, because the Over the Power Broken card is clearly Brainstorm, and Wizards clearly is avoiding banning the most powerful card in Legacy. Drop a Honey. Whew. Some people bought that out. Freaking crazy. That card is barely playable. Sideboard tech in a lands deck. Tabernacle is a thousand to fourteen hundred dollars already. Three hundred dollars for a drop of honey is just crazy. Hundred bucks, no big deal because it's a reserve list, a very rare card. It's reprinted kind of as periphery nodes in white. We will never see this back in green. Super cool card, but not worth that price tag. Foil Commander cards have started to spike a lot. This one I'm kind of unhappy about because I know about 40 people that knew I was looking for one of these for my all-foil green Commander deck. I had asked all over when it was $10, $20, No problem. Even $40, 45 I was offering $50, $60, $200. Bucks. Oh, I, I think I'm just going to have to get an awesome altar. I mean, this is crazy. Yes, it's over the top. Yes, it's an amazing card. It's fun, though. It's casual. It's not competitive. Check out all of your Foil Commander cards. There are lots of cards that have spiked like this. It's a market. Most people don't realize that the spikes happen. And when they're reserve lists like this, they slowly trickle back down, but they never return to anything like what you originally picked them up for. Dual lands. Oh, I've been wanting to do a video about this for several months. These are still liquid. A lot of people, especially outside of the West Coast, have been avoiding them or liquidating them, and we saw some price drops in there for a while. A lot of people didn't have confidence in the legacy market, but the commander and cube market have stepped in. These are moving really quickly through my binder. Revised dual lands are still a solid place to put your money, to pick up cool, playable cards long term, especially those with blue in it, but all of them overall. I'm happy to hold on to revised edition duels, no problem. Currently in standard, also look at the foils that are out there that could be playable in Commander long term. The gods are beautiful. I've got a whole video coming up on the history of the gods. Ether Hub is an amazing card. Cascading Cataracts, very, very nice card. These are all cards that in foil well worth holding on to long term, even if they take a small dip when they rotate out of standard. Old School is doing crazy things. This card is not even good in any other format, and barely good in Old School. I may do an Old School deck tech here to show you how this card is played. <sighs> Investment-wise, he's never going to go down. I mean, he'll drop, stabilize a little bit, but... A lot of weird cards because of old school spike like this and don't come back down because they're super rare in their reserve list. Vintage. Moxes are doing really well right now, especially Unlimited. But what has shocked me is that Beta and Alpha have not jumped. You can basically trade two sets of Unlimited power for one set of Beta power really easily at this point. And Beta power is super limited comparatively. I am shocked that beta power isn't at least 30% higher. If you've got unlimited power and somebody gives you an opportunity to throw in a few hundred cards to turn it into beta power, do it. Beta power is likely to go way up. The exception here in the market is nines or above in alpha or in beta, especially in alpha. Those have crazy price tags. Don't touch them. They're collectors. If you want these to play or even hold on to long-term investment, Something in the 7.5 to 8.5 range is fine because you can still liquidate it, but it's going to cost you a third of what that 9 or higher is going to cost, and it will go up much faster than the 9 pluses that are already overpriced. Workshops. Ooh, vintage. Right now, 27% 
of the meta from the last two months is workshops. Why? Workshops are just crazy. They're reloadable, reusable lotuses. There are lots and lots of new cards that have made these decks better. Every time they restrict a card, Wizard seems to print two more cards to replace it. At this point, you have so many restricted cards in workshops. Thinking of workshops or workshops and mocks, they just crush you. And what it's done to the entire environment is very, very warping. Will we ever see workshops get restricted? I actually think we will. Everybody I know in the vintage community is strongly disagreeing with me, but I don't believe the deck would actually be destroyed by restricting workshops. It means that workshops would get distributed to a bunch more players because people would sell off their extras, and you would have to play some of the soul lands or even a little bit weaker lands, but it would weaken the deck to drop it down below 27% of the meta. That's just crazy. Some commons to look for are also anything that you think could have an impact on Popper that is going to be playable. This is a cool aura hexproof Popper list. Solidarity over there, really, really nice card. I just got a foil one out of a pack. Super happy about that. Um, even the strength one has some limited applicable opportunities in Popper. Look through all of the standard cards and see which ones are going to be awesome in Popper and pick up foils. Nice pickups. So what are you buying? What have I missed in this video that you think is crazy underpriced? Put it in the comments and put the current price that you are paying or have paid for it recently, and then we'll come back. We'll look at this in a year or two and see if your pickups did well. Thank you to everybody supporting the channel over there on Patreon. Please consider supporting the channel myself. It's awesome people like all of these great people, many of which I met out at GP Vegas, that make this channel possible. Also, Chess.com and Main Phase MTG, great sponsors of the channel. Until next time, choose your cards wisely. Hello everybody, this is Sart with Mythic MTG Tech number 357, where we are doing an update on not pirates, not dinos, not unsaid, not merfolk, not goblins, not transformers, FTV folk, because I've... Ah, oh, that slides, Kurt.